Prashad Mukherjee and I retired from the University of Calcutta having taught for 40 long years in the Department of Statistics. I am now going to discuss multidimensional scaling from a somewhat uh, descriptive point of view. In the theory of choice and in analysis of decisions that uh, we make in our everyday lives, we quite often compare different objects or even different individuals who could be living beings in respect of some features or characteristics ultimately trying to reach some decision about um, uh, which object to choose or which individual to choose. And uh, that way scaling has been a very important task uh, for all those who dabble in the theory of choice. Scaling implies revealing relative positions of different objects or different individuals either on a straight line or in a two dimensional plane or in a three dimensional space simply because high dimensional spaces are difficult to visualize. These objects or individuals could be uh, concrete objects like manufactured products of different brands. Uh, they could be abstract entities like uh, pieces of handwriting done by different uh, students or even uh, paintings drawn by different contestants uh, in a drawing contest or the individuals could be subjects, living beings, students or even professionals. Uh, who have been uh, assessed for their competence or their performance in some particular task by some experts or judges and we would like to compare them in fact uh, by placing these individuals at least in an imaginary way as points in space. It will be convenient if we can place the individuals or the objects as points on a straight line may be slightly better if we can uh, represent uh, these individuals or objects as points on an Euclidean plane. Uh, more than the plane, if we think of a three dimensional space, it may not be that convenient to realize the relative positions of the individuals, but definitely nothing beyond dimension 4. Looked at from this perspective of uh, revealing relative positions among different objects or individuals, we can regard multidimensional scaling as an extension of uh, some one dimensional scaling known earlier. For example, we had the famous uh, paired comparisons by Thurston in which uh, we present uh, several objects usually in pairs to different judges. Mm -hmm and we ultimately find out the proportion of judges who prefer a particular product to another particular product within a pair. So, starting with the proportions of uh, judges preferring one product to another and that way it could be one individual to another, uh, we assume a certain standard normal distribution for the underlying trait or ability or feature in respect of which these objects or individuals are being compared and ultimately work out uh, scale values for the different uh, individuals. So, that uh, the individuals can correspond to some points on a straight line. The points are having uh, their locations in terms of the scale values obtained by making certain assumptions starting with the matrix of proportions. This uh, Thurston scaling definitely is one dimensional since we are locating the objects or the individuals to be compared by points on a straight line. If several features or characteristics have been considered, it may be better to represent the objects or the individuals 
may be by points on a two dimensional Euclidean plane. At the most we can represent them by points in a three dimensional space. That way multi dimensional scaling where the word multi corresponds to either two or three at the most can be regarded as an extension of one dimensional scaling which is used in the theory of choice or in analysis of decisions or in general in many social science research where uh, psychometricians devise different scaling procedures. We have a very famous scaling procedure due to Likert, very often used by researchers in social sciences. However, there is a fundamental difference between Likert scaling and uh, product scaling by Thurston. In the sense that in Likert scaling, what are scaled are not individuals, they are response categories. Whereas in Thurston scaling, we are trying to scale different individuals which are being compared, maybe different objects or different living beings. Multidimensional scaling also is considered an extension of uh, Thurston scaling because in multidimensional scaling, we like to associate uh, with each individual object or subject a point with two or three dimensions, we are not interested in the features or the characteristics possessed by the individuals in respect of which the individuals or the objects are being compared. Uh, a second way of looking at uh, multidimensional scaling, particularly from a mathematician's point of view, is to regard multidimensional scaling as uh, a method of projection, uh, as a method of projecting points in uh, a higher dimensional space to points on a lower dimensional space, trying to approximately preserve the relative distances of the points in the original space. In this sense, we can possibly regard multidimensional scaling as uh, a very useful tool in dimension reduction. In the context of multivariate data analysis, we often talk about dimension reduction in two senses. We may be required to reduce the number of variables or features or characteristics under consideration or we may be interested to reduce the number of individuals being compared. Uh, here the task is that once we consider all the characteristics or features as coordinates of a point and represent each individual or each object as a point in a higher dimensional space, the number of dimensions being equal to the number of features or characteristics being considered for the purpose of comparison. And the task is to represent uh, these points on a two dimensional plane or in a three dimensional space trying to preserve as much as possible the relative distances among points in the original set. So, there are two ways of looking at multidimensional scaling. Some people try to even consider multidimensional scaling as somewhat uh, close to factor analysis in multivariate data analysis. Again, in factor analysis, we do not try to consider the individuals eventually, we are more focused on the characteristics mostly subjects in which uh, candidates have been examined, scores have been given and so on. Therefore, a fundamental difference between multidimensional scaling on the one hand and factor analysis on the other would be that uh, in multidimensional scaling, we are concerned about certain objects or certain individuals. Uh, whom we would like to compare in terms of their relative separations or distances. On the other hand, in factor analysis, we try to explain uh, similarities or distances not among individuals, but among the characteristics or features, typically subjects, etcetera, 
in which the individuals have been assessed. In classical metric multidimensional scaling, we start with what may be called a distance matrix. We can conversely start with what may be called um, a proximity matrix as well. Usually, we start with a distance matrix or a dissimilarity matrix. If we have got uh, n objects or individuals, then we can definitely start with an n by n matrix input based on either ordinal measures or cardinal measures of either similarities or proximities or dissimilarities may be called distances by considering the different characteristics under consideration and ending up in a two or a three dimensional location of each individual. We are not much concerned with the characteristics or features which could be p in number and p could be quite large. We are concerned with the n objects or individuals which are to be located in a two dimensional Euclidean plane or a three dimensional Euclidean space with the idea of preserving as closely as possible the relative distances among the original n objects or individuals. Sometimes it is also possible to think of multidimensional scaling not in terms of a dimension reduction tool in the sense that uh, if we start with a matrix of cities in a large continent like the United States of America or maybe Asia or Europe for that purpose and we consider distances uh, between cities. These distances are uh, in terms of maybe flying distances or travel distances. Remember that these uh, cities located as points on a globe these are uh, points on a non Euclidean space. The earth surface is not an Euclidean plane and once we try to show these cities which can be shown on a globe on a map which is a two dimensional Euclidean plane. Then the question of preserving relative distances among cities on a globe or on the earth surface being represented by that globe uh, in terms of distances on the map. Then it is a question of projecting the non Euclidean uh, earth surface onto a two dimensional Euclidean plane namely map. This is what is typically called projection of different sorts in cartography and we had the very initial such projection given by marketer which students of geography in schools are taught. So, that way we have got different ways to really introduce multidimensional scaling. Common aspects are we have uh, different individuals or objects each can be characterized by several features or characteristics uh, each can be assessed by several judges or experts and we can talk of either similarities among them or conversely we can talk of dissimilarities among them. Typically we talk of dissimilarities or distances. So, the starting point in classical metric multidimensional scaling uh, is an n by n distance matrix. Distance could be physical distance as I was trying to mention. Distance could be the absolute uh, difference uh, in ranks assigned by a judge to the individuals. I consider a pair of individuals and I present this pair to a particular expert as a judge and the judge assigns one rank to one individual in the pair, a second rank to the second individual. I take the rank difference, take the absolute value that absolute value can be taken as an element of the distance matrix. Even I could have taken the score difference uh, scores being assigned by an examiner or an expert or a judge for performance of the two individuals in a pair in a particular task. So, absolute score differences or absolute rank differences or even physical distances as we measure 
these are all possible measures of distance in the classical metric multidimensional scaling. And uh, <coughs> if I do not talk of projecting a non Euclidean two dimensional surface on an Euclidean two dimensional plane as in the case of a map, but talk in general about uh, several features possessed by an individual. So, that an individual can be shown by a point in a high dimensional space and then try to display those individuals by points on a lower dimensional plane like a two dimensional plane or at the most a three dimensional space. Then the objective is uh, to retain or preserve relative distances uh, between the objects in a pair or the individuals in a pair all possible pairs being considered to the extent possible in terms of Euclidean distances between the two points in a pair on a two dimensional plane or in a three dimensional space. And uh, when you talk about uh, representing relative positions or relative distances as closely as possible, we should introduce some measure of closeness of approximation. So, eventually we are trying to get uh, approximate relative distances and the question of uh, how good this approximation can be or should be does arise. And in that context we may try to think of the original distance given in the original way between the two individuals or the two objects in a pair could be physical distance, could be rank difference absolute could be a difference in score whatever be it. And then we consider the Euclidean distance between the points corresponding to these two objects or individuals may be in a two dimensional plane or in some other cases in a three dimensional space. So, that for each pair of objects or individuals we have an original distance and we have what may be called an approximated reproduced distance in the Euclidean plane or three dimensional space. And you want that these distances one original the other reproduced should be as close to each other as possible. And uh, therefore, a typical criterion for the purpose of approximation would be in terms of we have uh, the original distance matrix capital D which could be rank difference, score difference or physical distance and uh, we have another uh, matrix of distances which are called the reproduced distances by representing the objects or individuals as points on a two dimensional plane or in a three dimensional space. And we take the uh, difference for each pair between these two distances, uh, the distance could be negative or positive to avoid any confusion we take the square, we sum these squares over all the possible pairs and then to make the sum of squared differences between these two distance measures free of uh, the original distance measures, we divide the squared difference between these two distances the original and the reproduced by the original distance and that way develop what is typically known as a stress. So, what we get is uh, the sum of standardized squared differences between the original and the reproduced distances. This sum of uh, standardized squared differences is sometimes called stress and the stress will definitely depend on how do we reproduce the distances it will also depend definitely that way on the number of dimensions we consider essentially two or three. So, depending on the number of dimensions we choose usually two at the most three and the algorithm we ultimately adopt uh, to locate the points as uh, points on a plane or as points in a three dimensional space we will get a value of the stress. And the objective in this case would be to minimize the stress. 
So, you should develop an algorithm to get the reproduced distances and from that to get the coordinates of the points representing the original objects or individuals on a two dimensional plane or in a three dimensional space in such a manner that stress becomes the least possible. For this purpose, one particular algorithm which has been quite often used, particularly uh, used in the classical metric multi dimensional scaling would be from the original distance matrix, we calculate a matrix A. D i j is the distance between the two objects i and j in the original distance matrix. We take minus half d i j square as elements of a new matrix which we call A. From this A, we calculate another matrix B, where B is for any particular cell the intersection of a row and a column. We take this A i j element as calculated from the matrix A right now minus we take the total in that row, we also subtract the total in that column and we add the total in the entire table. That becomes the element of the matrix B. And then we find out the largest eigenvalues. Once the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 etcetera have been arranged according to magnitude, we take the largest eigenvalue of B and then corresponding the eigen vectors which I may call L 1, L 2 etcetera, L p for the p characters, they can be normalized and then they will yield the coordinates of the points by which I will represent the original objects or individuals. The coordinates of the objects are the rows of the eigen vectors and this is a solution or algorithm suggested by Torgerson a very well known psychometrician. We can possibly illustrate uh, this classical multi dimensional scaling procedure in terms of an example. Suppose we have got a set of TV brands, they are all television sets that way the same object, but produced by different manufacturers and therefore, they carry different brand names. We have 8 such sets and uh, in terms of different features like picture clarity, convenience uh, for controlling from a remote point, sound etcetera, etcetera. There are several characteristics which you can consider to examine the performance of a television set and uh, we present uh, these 8 television sets to a judge and uh, the judge is required to consider all these features and to assign some rank to each of the sets. Imagine the ranks given to set 1 corresponding to brand 1 is 7, to set 2 is 4, to set 3 rank 1. In other words, the third set or the third brand is judged as the best by the judge and assigned rank 1. Similarly, to the eighth set a rank 3 has been assigned by the judge. So, the second row represents the ranks assigned by the judge who considers all the features of performance to the 8 television brands. And then in terms of these uh, ranks, we can find out the rank differences. We take any pair, so I have got the sets along the, along the rows, we have the same sets along the columns. So, you have got an 8 by 8 matrix and uh, this is a distance matrix in the sense that each distance for a pair like 1 and 2 if I take set 1 versus set 2, I consider set 1 having received a rank 4 and set 2 having received a rank, I am sorry, a rank 7 and set 2 having received a rank 4, the rank difference is 3. So, that way I consider the rank differences. In case the difference comes out to be negative, I ignore that negative sign and simply consider the absolute rank differences. So, that way I get this matrix. Obviously, the diagonal elements 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 etcetera, there is no difference because there is no pair in fact, that way they are all taken as zeros. So, that way this will be a symmetric matrix as the starting input matrix for multi dimensional scaling. So, starting with this matrix of d i j's as mentioned earlier, 
we will construct first of all a matrix A as minus half d i j square and then from that matrix uh, A we will construct another matrix B by considering an element a i j from which we subtract the row total, the column total and add the grand total. That way we get elements of the matrix B and uh, then from the matrix B we calculate the Eigen values. We take the largest Eigen value and from the largest Eigen value we get the Eigen vectors. These Eigen vectors will give me the coordinates of the points either in two dimensions or three dimensions as I have chosen. So, if I take uh, the Eigen values, I have got a computational method which is somewhat similar to a technique used in multivariate data analysis namely principal component analysis. But again in terms of the concepts involved principal component analysis and this uh, multidimensional scaling they are different. Because in the principal component analysis we try to reduce the number of variables to some chosen linear combinations of those variables. So, we reduce the number of variables which correspond to features of performance for the television sets. We are not going to reduce that. We are ultimately trying to uh, locate the eight television sets as points on a particular plane or a Euclidean space to reveal how these uh, performances differ from one set to another. That way multidimensional scaling is really not much of an analytical tool. It is a tool typically for what is called data visualization. If this is the data matrix called the distance matrix then how do we really visualize these distances? An 8 by 8 matrix is not that appealing to somebody who is not much familiar with mathematics, even does not know what is called a matrix. But if we can show the 8 television sets as 8 points in a plane by applying that particular algorithm due to Torgerson, then it is appealing to the eye that oh, this television set is here this set is here, that set is there, that set is here and I am definitely helped by the analysis to make a choice out of these eight television sets. Uh, when I look at the two dimensions of that two dimensional plane, these two dimensions do not correspond to two different features. They are artificially brought in. A question does remain about uh, how many dimensions we consider two so that we represent the television sets by points on a two dimensional plane or you go up to three namely we take a three dimensional space. Such a question of course, does arise in the context of principal component analysis as well. However, as I said conceptually these are different. The technique to find out uh, where do we stop in regard to the number of dimensions as compared to the number of components in PCA is the same diagram called scree plot. What you can do is you can find out the minimized stress as I defined earlier. For the case of two dimensions as also for the case of three dimensions, normally we do not go beyond three. And then if you find there is a lot of difference that the minimized stress for three dimension is definitely much less than the minimized stress for two dimensions, we should retain a three dimensional space for data visualization. Otherwise for the sake of simplicity, we can definitely go back to a two dimensional plane. That way the whole idea of uh, multi dimensional scaling at least in the classical sense uh, is to help data visualization. There have been many ramifications and modifications of the classical metric multidimensional scaling. We can definitely have several judges, each judge giving me a distance matrix. I can pull them together, come to a matrix of average distances. I can consider that way something like not a measure which I can show as number. I can consider even a non-metric multidimensional scaling 
as the data visualization technique. Uh, Multidimensional scaling has become pretty useful for data visualization in different contexts and uh, I would simply point out a very few references essentially textbooks including one or two articles which are very fundamental in character. These were initiated by psychometricians, taken up by social scientists and now taken up by anyone uh, who finds interest in multivariate data analysis.